Hello guys, welcome to Hank's Custom Rifles, another episode of Hank's TV. Today is September the 3rd. It's been a beautiful day out here. Me and Mindy's been down here at the range most of the day test firing guns, and this is the last one we've got to do today. Um, it's my basic muzzle loader build. You guys are familiar with what you get with one of my builds. I just fired it off one time a second ago to make sure that everything was sighted in and it's ready to go. So the ramrod, when you buy one of these guns from me, of course, you know the ramrod will be in there. It'll go all the way in. And um, there you go. It's all the way in like it would be when you're carrying it. The gun comes with a muzzle brake, comes with a custom barrel band, and a ramrod ferrule. These things are machined from solid stainless steel, same contour, taper as the barrel, so when it slides in place with a drop of Loctite, it'll never come off. Uh, it's TIG welded from the inside, so you can't even see where I put them together. That's a very nice little design. It takes a lot of work to make this little part. And then the barrel, of course, is a Brux stainless steel barrel. It's a 1 in 20 twist, modified number 17 contour. We've got a stainless steel Remington 700 action. We've got a Night Force 20, mil, 20 MOA Picatinny rail. That's a steel, ring, uh, steel base that I use on all my muzzle loaders and I drill and tap it with two extra mounting screws so that we've got six mounting screws holding this base on. The scope is a Night Force NXS. This is an 8 by 32 by 56 scope. We've mounted this scope in a set of Vortex rings because we could not get Night Force rings at the time when we ordered the scope. They were completely out of the rings we wanted so we substituted them over for the Vortex. I've never had a problem with Vortex rings. I've never had scope slip in them or nothing like that. So I think we're good to go with these rings. Um, the stock is just a basic Boyd's varmint thumb hole that's been pillar bedded and free floated. And I do have to do a lot of work to this barrel channel right here. I got to put this in a mill and machine and machine all that out so that this barrel will fit down into the channel because when it comes to you, it's not even close to fitting. We um, machine a groove down the center of the stock and I've got a little block in here, the detent block that holds my ramrod in place. And I think it's probably the best ramrod retaining system on the market. This ramrod will not come out if you're riding your four wheeler or carrying your gun up a tree or whatever. That ramrod is not gonna move. So, like I said, I already shot it once, I sighted it in. I shot it earlier. We had a little blooper with the camera, so that and that was none of that video took. So we've got one shot in the target. We started over. We're going to go back down here now and shoot a second shot. I'm going to go ahead and load it back up. The first shot off of the bore sight was just about, I can't really remember now. It was just a little high and a little left. So we'll probably make a scope adjustment here real quick and see how this gun's going to shoot for groups. We're shooting some Pittman Accumax 275 grain bullets. These are some of his blim bullets. I've had pretty good luck with them as far as just testing rifles and sighting them in. So let's see how these things will load up. And um, that one's pretty tight. <clears throat> yep, I need to size these some more. <clears throat> that was a pretty tight fitting bullet fellas I'm going to size these others back down just a little bit I don't like them to fit that tight that will definitely probably affect our group with these first three shots but all we're trying to do right now is get on paper get sighted in good and I'll give you guys a little tip and I've had some people bend these ramrods when they get a bullet tight like that you want to take your hands and get right down on it and just go in just a little bit and then get another grip and go in a little bit if you grab way up here and try to get on, you've got so much room for this ramrod to flex. 
as soon as it flexes, it'll it'll bend or it could break. You could run your hand down on it. It could hurt you. So be careful when you get a bullet that's tight. Now I've got some uh, aluminum rods. If they're really, really tight, I'll use a solid aluminum rod to push it in with. I'm going to bring it down two clicks. I'm going to bring it to the right two clicks. Okay, and I'm going to make an adjustment to the sizing die because that bullet, that bullet was really tight. And let's see if this one here won't load a little bit easier. That's more like it. That went down easy, but yet it'll stay there. It's not going to move on us. And let's do that one more time, but I'm going to size that bullet first. Now I like to get my die set where I only have to run the bullet through one time. I know some guys like to run their bullets through two or three times, but it takes a looser setting on the die, and I just, I find that to be less accurate than if you just get that bullet to size right the first time. Now, that's just my personal opinion, and I know everybody's got a way of doing it. If you're full foreman, it might be a different story. You might want to run it through two times or three indexing it each time so it lines up with different grooves in the barrel when you run it through your full forming die but I'm not a full former I don't like to do it I get plenty of good enough accuracy with smooth sizing these bullets so it's just not worth the extra work to me to to uh, full form Okay, we got a halfway decent group going down there. Um, that first bullet that was hard to go down, it's the farthest out of the group. I'm going to make another scope adjustment. That should bring us up to our bullseye or get us real close to it. 
Um, we're going to shoot a couple more bullets here in just a minute, but for now we'll take a break. Okay, guys, we're back. I sized up three more of these bullets. We're just going to try to see where they're going to go as far as a group. See if we've got our point of impact um, closer to our bullseye. 78 grains of IMR 4198. Pittman Acumax 275 grain bullet. These are the blims. I get these from Kyle on occasions when he gets some in that just don't meet quality control. Instead of throwing them away, they're good for sighting in the gun or they kill deer at 100 yards with no problem. I do think that uh, they don't group quite as well as some of the better bullets that he makes, but you can see this one here. This one's got a, the tip on it is just like it's pushed in too far or something. And where they get these at is when they're setting up the machine to make this batch of bullets, they're gonna run a dozen or so before they get their formula just right. It's just like setting up anything else when you're setting up your powder measure at home. You gotta throw several charges before you get it adjusted where you want it. When you're reloading your ammo, you gotta make a few adjustments to your die settings before you get it to where you want it. And these bullets are the same way and instead of wasting them, I'll shoot them down range. Now here we go. Okay, looks like we got a one whole group down there this time with those blims and the first three we shot about a three quarter inch group with. So even though they're blim bullets, they shoot perfectly good enough for what we're doing here today. And we're gonna take a few minutes break, let this barrel cool down and we'll get back with you guys here in just a second. Okay guys, we're back. We've shot two groups out of this gun with the Pittman Acumax bullets and they shot pretty good even though they were the blend bullets that Kyle has. 
Um, I kind of stress that because when the groups aren't good, we got to blame it on something, and we can't blame it on the rifle, so we got to blame it on the blend bullets. But anyway, what we're going to do now, we're just going to do something different, a little bit for fun. Um, you guys watch all my videos, and I always shoot Acumax or Match Hunters or a good quality bullet. And today we're just going to play around. We're going to shoot a couple of bullets. And we've been down here all day, me and Mindy have. And the batteries are about dead on the camera, so I'm hoping I can finish this before the battery dies. We've got 10 minutes of battery life left. I've got nine bullets to shoot. So we're going to shoot nine bullets out of this gun without stopping. We're just going to load and shoot. We're not going to interrupt the video. We're not going to stop anything. But I want to run across with you real quick what these bullets are. You can shoot just about any bullet you want to out of these guns. As long as it's 452 diameter bullet, it'll work. So bullets that are made for 45 ACP handgun will shoot fine out of these guns. We've got a 185 grain pistol bullet, that's an XTP. We've got a spear gold dot, 230 grain bullet. Now I bought a hundred of these for $14.99. So if you just want to go out and plink all day, you got a hundred bullets. $15, you can shoot them all day. And then we've got these 250 grain FTXs that was full formed size for another gun that looks like a Krieger barrel. This is a wide land Krieger barrel, but I just smooth sized them down to fit in this barrel. And we'll go back to these 185s real quick. If you was to have a kid, you know, a lot of you guys want to take your kids hunting. Put them one of them 185 grain bullets in this gun with 55 or 60 grains of gunpowder and let them deer hunt. Just keep their shots under 100 yards. You can sit over an open field like this and get a 100 yard shot pretty easy. And these bullets here are going to go down pretty easy because they were also sized for a different gun. There goes a groundhog. Man, I ain't seen a groundhog in forever. He'll come out there to stay, I'll shoot at him. But anyway, let's go ahead, guys. We're not going to do no more talking now. I'm just going to load and shoot this gun. We're going to shoot all these at 100 yards. A different dot for each group. I'll start on the top left and go to the top right and then the bottom.
Now we're going to start shooting the 230 grain spear gold dots. We got three deer out in the field down there. A little fawn, two fawns, and a mother. Hopefully these will go in the barrel. should go in. <clears throat> okay, pause, save the battery life. Okay guys, we paused, we changed out the batteries, we had another battery, and it's got 20 or 30 minutes worth of power to it, so we'll be able to finish this video. Um, I was able to get that bullet down and now we're going to try to shoot it. So what we're shooting now are the 230 grain spear gold dots. Still tight. I use the same setting to size these bullets as I did the Accumaxes, and they're tight. Ah. Okay, pause it. Okay, guys, I had another hammer down bullet. I'm using the same setting to size these bullets on as I did the Accumax, and you can see that they don't size the same. Um, I'm hoping that I'm, I'll even be able to get these FTXs down the barrel. I sized that one a little bit more just because this is a fun test not exactly working like I wanted it to I thought we could just load these in pretty easy oh now look one adjustment one little notch on the sizing die and the bullet goes down like a piece of cake Still got a pretty good group out of it. I'm gonna size these again too. Okay guys, three more shots and we're gonna be done.
one definitely went down pretty easy. That one ain't. Now, tell you what I'm going to do, guys, since these bolts are fitting tight. I know these have been full formed. I think they have. No, I got another tight one. I'll have to hammer it down, fellas. All right, guys, I got that one in. And this is our last shot for the day. Let's see what we can do with it. Okay, that was it, fellas. We're gonna walk down, we'll look at the target real quick, but I just wanna tell you that pretty much everything I just did didn't work out the way I wanted it to work out. I sized all these bullets to fit down this barrel. The uh, little 185 grain XTPs, they almost fell down. The gold dots wouldn't hardly fit, and when I got to these FTXs, they were really, really hard to fit. Now, the FTX is a lot thicker jacket. It's a harder, stronger bullet than either one of these. So it's a stronger bullet than the Accumax. It's going to take a different setting on the die. And you're just going to have to play with them and find out what setting it likes. But what I did was not really the best way to go about it. I had to actually hammer these down. These I were able to push with my ramrod, but it took a heck of a grunt. These went down really easy. So... I'm going to call this gun finished. It is a customer's gun. I don't want to wear it out the first day. I took it to the range. We shot it um, 15 times, so that ain't too bad. Got a good video out of it. Just to let you guys see, there are other bullets out there you can shoot. You can shoot some really cheap stuff, load them up, 55, 60 grains of powder for your kids to shoot. Big heavy gun like this, and you won't have much recoil with them. So let's go on down to the target and take a quick look at it. Okay guys, we made it down to the target. 
like always, this is 100 yards from the benches where we're test firing these at. I test everything at 100 yards. Uh, this was my first shot out of the gun, which was not on the camera. It, we thought it was on the camera, but we had technical difficulties and we missed this shot, so we just started uh, regular. We came down here. This was my second group. This is the first group out of the gun. This is the first three shot group out of the gun. Not too bad shooting the Pittman Acumax blend bullets. We shot another group with the Pittman Acumax blend bullets. And this here is about, that's less than one inch, probably closer to three quarters. Time you go center to center here. We got a three quarter inch group. Then I wanted to just play around a little bit and show you guys that we can shoot other bullets out of these guns. It didn't work quite as easy as I wanted it to. We had some problems getting some of these bullets down. But we were able to get them down. We were able to shoot them all. And this is the first group we shot with those little 185 grain pistol bullets. You can see it shot quite a bit higher than the 275 grain bullets. Um, I shot the same powder charge, 78 grains of IMR 4198. So this is the 175 or the 185 grain pistol bullet. Then I moved over here. This was that 230 grain spear gold dot bullet. That's actually a pretty good hunting bullet. I've killed deer with those before and they'll work pretty good for you. And then we moved over here and shot the 250 grain um, FTX bullets from Hornady. They size harder. They went down really hard. These were my first two shots. They're touching. The third shot went down the hardest. And I really had to hammer it down, so it probably built a little more pressure, caused it to shoot a little bit high. But you guys can experiment around with some different bullets. You'll need a sizing die. You can get one of them for me. If you don't have one, you're going to have to have it in order to experiment with different bullets because you just don't want to have to hammer them every one of them down the barrel. But there it is, fellas. Proof is in the pudding. Here's you another Hankins custom rifle muzzle loader. Shoot 3,000 feet per second. Kill deer at 400, 500 yards. Pretty easy. Um, if you did your homework, you could kill deer at 750 yards with one of these guns. This one is decked out pretty nice. Night four scope. All the bells and whistles. Jewel trigger. Muzzle brake. Good barrel on it. Brooks barrel. So anyway, fellas. Another thumbs up on the videos. I appreciate you guys for watching me. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Visit Hank's Message Board. Until next time, let's call it a day.